So the question is, whatever you think of Gawker Media, yeah. and you can, you can say what you think of it if you want, but uh, whatever you think of it, do you think somebody who happens to be a billionaire ought to be able to fund a series of lawsuits, regardless of their merit, whose real purpose is to put that company out of business and destroy them for personal yeah. reasons? Yeah, um, I don't. And I will, um, uh, my view on this, and, I, and again, I don't know the details of this particular situation. I don't think I really need to, because I'm thinking of, I will take it up a level and talk about the, some of the principles that I think would, in my mind, would apply here. And um, look, you know, uh, I, I can take this from a couple of directions, but um, you know the old saying that sometimes, you know, I think it's attributed to Confucius. Who knows if it's really Confucius or not? But um, seek revenge, and you should dig two graves, one for yourself. And uh, you know, uh, really, uh, you just want. How do you, you always have to ask yourself? How do you want to spend your time? How do you want to spend your time and your energy? And do you really want to do that trying to right some, even if it's legitimate wrong? Like, let's say that somebody actually did wrong you. Is that really how you want to spend your time? I don't think so. I think most people, if they step back, take a deep breath, they would say, I'm going to go on and do great things. I'm going to do amazing things in the future. Then from the, uh, uh, I would also say that public figure, you know, as a public figure, um, the best defense against, uh, and again, I'm not going to try to get into any particular story. This is not about um, Peter or Gawker or any particular thing, but it, the best defense to, uh, to speech that you don't like about yourself as a public figure is to develop a thick skin. It, 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 it's really the only effective defense because you can't stop it. Um, you know, you are going to be misunderstood. If you're doing anything interesting in the world, you're going to have critics. The only way, if you, if you absolutely can't tolerate critics, then don't do anything new or interesting. <laughs> and then you can insulate yourself. Then think how wonderful your life will be. Is that the Bezos principle? Um, yeah, so <laughs> I would just say, go stand on a street corner and watch in a crowded urban area and watch all the people walk by and think about what they're thinking about. I bet you none of those people are thinking about you. That's true. And um, I, I'll they're all it. thinking none about. None of these people are thinking about. They're me. all think. These guys are thinking about when can I get to the bar. No, they're thinking and, about you. you know, and so it's it's it, there, you, you stand there on that busy street corner. All those people, you know, I, maybe I had a. I had, if I if somebody wrote something about me, I don't like. I'm like, oh, you know, it's it's a, I don't like that. It's not true. It's wrong. I think about that. You're probably go, mad at I me. Stand there, I, yeah, my wife says, if Jeff is unhappy, wait five minutes. So I can't, but I would go, I would go, I would go at least as a thought You haven't experiment. been unhappy long enough to pick I up would, the phone and I'm, I'm not so unhappy that I'm not here. Yeah. And if you kind of just take that step back, uh, and, you know, and then there's the, the kind of free speech, the, the, I guess the final thing, you didn't want to answer this long, I apologize, but the, I'm That's passionate fine. about this I issue. Hear, I want to hear your is, thoughts about is this. Is you always have to remember this country has the best free speech protections in the world because of the Constitution, but also because of our cultural norms. And you don't want to erode those. You don't want to create any kind of climate of fear or chill with respect to free speech norms. And, so, and, that, and the most important thing to remember about that is that um, beautiful speech doesn't need protection. It's ugly speech that needs protection. So of course, that's where the rubber is going to meet the road. You know, somebody is going to write something very ugly, and certain people will say, "Well, they need to be punished for that ugly speech." And but probably not really. If you step back and think about what a great society we have, and that a big part of it is the fact that we have these cultural norms that allow people to say really ugly things. We don't have to like it. We don't have to invite those people to our dinner parties. There's also, you know, but, but you should let them say it.